Hello everybody, my name is Faith Murray and I will be taking you on a field trip today to Golden Gardens Park. Um, this is a wetland and open ocean mixed environment. Um, I'll be showing you kind of more of the wetland side today, um, but yeah, let's go find some organisms. Golden Gardens is located in North Seattle and I got here by driving a car today. All right, this is what the wetland looks like when you first come in. And the first organism I want to talk about is called the common velvet grass. You will typically find this species of grass in areas with damp soil, and that includes wetlands. To identify this grass, it's going to be a velvety texture. It's going to be green in color. It will have those pink, purpley tufts on top and you will normally find them in bunches. Something interesting about this organism is that it is found invasive. The next organism I wanna talk about are some wetland turtles that I came across. I assume that these are western pond turtles that are native to Washington, but I couldn't get a close enough look to actually make sure that that's the correct species. You'll typically find these guys basking on logs, like in this picture, or in smaller bodies of water. And to identify them, they'll typically have a black, brown upper shell, possibly a black, yellow undershell, and um, dark skin and legs. This next organism was a tough one for me to determine what species it was, but I believe it's to be a bleach weed. You'll be able to find this species in intertidal and shallow subtidal areas attached to rocks. To identify this organism, it's going to be a yellowish brownish in color. Its blades will grow up to be about six to eight inches long and have those identifiable blades on its edges or leaflets and you'll also find it attached to rocks. Something interesting is that when it is crushed, it supposedly smells like bleach, hence why it's called bleach weed. So as I'm on the beach right now, I came across just a really common uh, type of seaweed that we've learned about during the course, Turkish towel. Um, this stuff I think is just so cool and the texture is just amazing. The first concept I wanna talk about when thinking about our class this quarter is invasive species and shown here is the common water parsley and harvest lice species and these two species will reduce biodiversity and cause other native species to reduce their populations and become extinct. Native species are important because when their populations fluctuate it causes the surrounding food webs to fluctuate as well. Lastly, invasive species cause other species to have to adapt to their new conditions, and that is a negative effect. The next organism I want to talk about are these kelp isopods. We saw a lot of these um, at a different location, which is Karkik Park. They are super cute and are found crawling in beds of uh, eelgrass and are found in intertidal and shallow subtidal areas. To identify them, they are normally a green, black, or brown color depending on what their diet is, and you'll also find ridges in their back along with um, multiple legs. This last little organism was so cute, found at Karkeek Park. It is called a Taylor's Eelgrass Sea Hare, and it is a species of sea slug. This organism will be found in different kinds of sea grasses along the coast. To identify this species, it will be a green color that matches very similar, especially to the eelgrass we found it in, with white stripes outlined in black on its back. and you may be able to see some rhinophores coming out of its head. If you couldn't tell already, this was definitely the favorite find of the day for our class. So cute.
the last concept I want to talk about is human impact, specifically pollution. Like this picture here shows a metal can, and the next picture will show some oil pollution, and this is bad because it kills and harms marine organisms, and these polluted items will absorb into the ocean water and into the marine organisms, harming them and their environment. Runoff chemicals like this will cause algae blooms, which is extremely toxic to the wildlife and especially to local fishing industries. Amongst the current environmental issues, we cannot lose hope. There is still so much work to be done and so many opportunities that we can take, such as preventative measures, such as trying to cut down our own personal waste that we create. We can also take action by participating in local organization events such as cleanups or water testing opportunities. There is so much room to grow and so much hope for the future that we can create now. Thank you so much for watching.